video about procedurals and booleans. So in this scene, if I select the, in the schematic this shift channel, channel, press the C key, now I can click and drag in the viewport to hall. You see that the boolean operation which is going on on the sphere can be interactively adjusted. So I'm going to drop that by pressing the spacebar and show you what is going on in this scene. So in the item list I have a mesh layer named mesh. When I select it and go to my mesh operations, you see that I have a sphere and a boolean. So if I make the boolean inactive, select the sphere, you see that I have 48 sides and 27 segments. I've added a boolean to it. When I expand it, you see that I have a driver surface which is named mesh layer cutter. The cutter is now invisible. If I make it visible, press Shift A, that is my cutter mesh, which in itself is also a boolean. And that is what you saw me do earlier. So I have my polygon bevel 2 up here. When I selected the Shift channel, now I'm going to select it again, press the C key, and I'll click and drag in the viewport. You see that that bevel is being updated and as a result the boolean on the procedural sphere is also being updated. So if I deconstruct everything and I'm going to make these ones inactive. So I have my cutter mesh which is a procedural cube and I can hide the sphere also. Shift A. So that is my cube. It's a cube with size half a meter in XYZ. I've added a transform effector to it so when I select that effector and I can move the cube around like that. Control Z. Then I've added a polygon bevel and I have no selection so that bevel works on all polygons with group polygons off. When I turn it on, I have a complete cube, of course. Turn it off again. Now the sides of the cube have been beveled. And I have a second bevel. And when I open that one, you see I have a select by previous operations. And I've selected that polygon bevel of the previous operation and set the name to sides. So when I click over here and go to component mode, now I can interactively adjust the shift. And I've added that channel also to a palette which is schematic. So when I click that one and press the C key now, and I have to be in item mode. So C, click and drag, now I can interactively adjust the shift of that bevel. So I'm going to close that one and make my mesh again visible. Shift A. So that boolean, when I select my shift in the schematic, press the C key as early, shown earlier, I can interactively adjust the shift of the bevel. And I also have my transform effector. So if I press W, now we can move that cutter mesh around. We can rotate it, of course. Oops. And it's a bit sluggish hauling around like that, because of course there is a lot going on with the procedurals anyway and I have selected my mesh so I should have my transform effector selected sorry about that so interactively adjust the boolean like that I have also a second mesh which is a duplicate of the first mesh but this time when I select it and go to my mesh operations and go to the booleans, now 
the operation has been set to intersect. So if I make both mesh and mesh2 visible, you see that I get a complete sphere, but of course, oh, sorry. so mesh2 is the intersection, mesh is the subtraction. And of course, again, it all operates live because everything is procedural, just like that. And I have a few others, again, simply a copy of Mesh 2, but this, this time for the sphere I've changed the sides, so four sides in three segments, and again the boolean for which has been set to subtract and the same cutter item layer, so if I see in the hall, so you see very interesting results, all interactively can be achieved with procedurals and the possibilities are so great, it's actually fun to find out practical uses for it, like this, this is something which would take a lot of work to model, but if you create booleans, a procedure of booleans like this, it's very fast. And I have a last one, again, this has been set to cylinder, so if I, for instance, were to unhide that, select my base mesh, add operator and for instance uh, cone, so now I have a cone, set that for instance to 2 meters, go to my boolean, now you see I can simply press ctrl B to copy and add another, so I don't need that cylinder over here anymore, so delete, so now I have a cone with that boolean and if I press Ctrl D to copy that one and for my boolean set that one for instance to intersect. Now I have the intersection. Just like that. And of course I can adjust the shift of that second bevel of the cutter. So press the C key and click and drag in the viewport. Hide that one. If I do this, select the shift channel and click and drag. And of course, I also have my transform effector, so I can move that around. A lot of interesting possibilities and there actually are so many possibilities it's mind-boggling to remember all of this that's why I'm recording this video to remember it myself so to recap I have a cutter mesh which is procedural it's a cube in this example with the transform effector a polygon bevel which operates on all polygons because no selection has been made and then a second polygon bevel which operates on the previous selection it has been set to sides so that when I adjust the shift that you can interactively adjust the width of the beams I've added it over here in a palette to the schematic so that I can select it, press C key and click and drag to do it interactively. And I hide this and I have several procedural meshes with a boolean and you can of course select subtract or union intersect subtract and add and you can simply select one of these items, press Ctrl D to have a duplicate and instead of the sphere delete it for instance, 
Select the base mesh, add operator, and for instance, an ellipsoid. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. And maybe 1.5. What did I do? It. Oops. So base mesh, add operator, ellipsoid. Maybe I had already had a sphere, so maybe a capsule. One, three, one, for instance. And the capsule should be below the boolean. Like that. And again, so shift C, click and drag. So you see, possibilities are enormous. And with the transform effector, I'm going to set it back to zero. Rotation in X, you see everything is being updated. Everything like that would be hard or take a lot of time to model. But with procedurals, you can experiment. I'm going to unhide my cutter, select it, I am mesh 6, and I see that there is a polygon over there, have to check out what that is about, but anyway, you see there are a lot of possible combinations